my name is Regis and welcome to this free card video um, so I've, I've been trying to figure out something to talk about and uh, I haven't been able to make up my mind where I wanted to uh, probably give you some kind of in-depth full you know design in free card or if I just want to go along with you know a few uh, tips and tricks or whatever so I've just decided I was just gonna make a video and just uh, flow along and see how it goes um, so this is Frika. Um, so um, first of all one thing I would like to say is that I really uh, enjoy the way that FreeCAD is set up in when you open it uh, you have this FreeCAD start center and uh, and you have this quick button that takes you directly to a website in browse in what in on browser in FreeCAD so I can click directly onto it and uh, you know this browser is within FreeCAD and I have access directly to the forum <clears throat> so this is pretty cool um, so um, it, it has some basic functionalities and you can log in and interact and see what's going on there and that's a good way to uh, to keep up with pace with what's currently going on in the in the free cat um, world so for example you can see uh, you've got all these uh, new projects uh, that Yorick has been working on that you can actually get to see and engage in some, into some kind of meaningful conversation with the community as well if you're user. So it's very open and it's very accessible and that's something uh, that I uh, mostly enjoy as well about FreeCAD. So anyways you can uh, go back and check those things out. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is uh, show you uh, that you know, you you can start your project if you had a previously saved project, or uh, you know, you have all these direct links. You can go to the tutorials, uh, the FreeCAD homepage, of course, and then uh, you've got some example projects. And this is an example project, uh, the example arch architecture model. <clears throat> so this is basically uh, you can see uh, a section cut and uh, some elevations uh, one in wireframe mode and uh, one in solid so you can see uh, uh, when you look closely uh, you can see that the level of detail and the quality is there um, and it does the job it does explain uh, pretty much what's going on and so you can see the section here um, it's pretty uh, you know legible um, it's pretty clean you can as you can see uh, this is very basic of course and then here you've got the model itself that you can also observe and see how it, it was uh, co kind of put together so it's, it's fairly good that it is made that way and on the right here you've got the tree the tree so here you can see that this is the folder wh where all the dimensions are so if I can hide the dimensions like that or I can hide the entire model if I want to or I can show the section planes, the section cut, you know, the section planes that are cutting uh, to provide these views with. So um, it's very, it's very organized. You can organize the drawing, and everything is very simple and and it's very intuitive to work this way. So I'm just going to try maybe to uh, <clears throat> do a very basic demonstration at first. Uh, while using some of these tools um, just to see how it goes along and you know how we can just generate or create basic stuff at first in FreeCAD so I'm gonna close this and uh, so here I'm back in in the start page um, so I'm going to start a new project by clicking on this button here so as you can see uh, it you know it started in new folder so right now I have to select the workbench so for now uh, the three main workbenches that are probably gonna be used the most would be uh, you know the architecture workbench of course primarily uh, the, the workbench that would be used um, and you've also got the draft workbench that will be used and occasionally we can use a sketcher workbench uh, I mean depending on the application you can use it 
often or not so it really depends but for for this particular purpose uh, uh, we might not be uh, using it as much and sometimes too we might go into the pot design uh, and stuff like that so those are the three the four main workbenches that could be used at any given time but mostly we would be uh, hanging out mostly in the architecture workbench of course so I like to organize my tabs uh, my tools this way so I like to uh, just click and hold that and just drag it up there so everything stays consistently within the view range um, as you can see here so I have all the drawing options the, the modify options and then the snaps and all the elements here as well so <clears throat> so that's looking good so I'm just going to um, as you can see the project name is unnamed here so um, I'm just going to save as on my desktop um so that you know what am i going to call it maybe uh uh let's give let's give it a name uh free cad demo tutorial all right and as you can see the name appeared here everything is looking good okay so if I look down here, my units is telling me that I am in inches, obviously, because I, I can see three three eighths of an inch by three eighths of an inch, and that describes the box that I'm here. Because you know, if I scroll in and out, you can see that as soon as I move in, it's changing. I'm half an inch to to a quarter of an inch, so that describes the box that we see here in front of us. And so, uh, I probably want to work in meters for now in this exercise. But and here on the side, you can see this this blender button this button that says blender and this is the this the um the scroll of the the type of zoom uh, of scroll wheel uh, zoom and panoramic motion that you would like um uh, typically i tend to move between the blender and the cad uh mode often so either i go to cad or i go to blender um so blender allows me to use a middle mouse button as a rotating like this as you can see meanwhile the cad button allows me to uh to pan around when i use the middle mouse button so this gives me the sensation of working on a work plane rather and this makes it easy to to work on a 2d uh from a 2d perspective okay so right now it's good that it's in cad um, so I can just move around and I, I just scroll out a little bit and as you can see the units are changing but I want to change the units to meters so I'm going to go to the edit preference <coughs> edit preference and in the generals and generals tab menu I'm going to go to the units and building units I'm going to pick uh, building euro uh, okay uh, probably this one MKS right that's the one I'm looking for okay so um, everything changed here as you can see now um, so this is as far as what the basic uh, the, the basic layout would look like for now all right so now we seem to be ready to start laying out some stuff one last detail uh, is to to pay attention all the time is the 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 work plane. The work plane is essential to pay attention to, and also the snaps because the snaps and the work planes is what allows you to feel comfortable working in any space mode and control the object. So this guy it should is of importance. Uh, what's it called? The working plane. So it allows you to 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 make sure that the whatever you draw in space stays locked down into the specific work plane <clears throat> so I'm going to explain that to you when we while we we will be working okay so so I'm going to take a little quick break and I'll be right back
Alright guys, I'm back. So I just thought um, you'd probably be a bit more interesting to um, get started with maybe the draft tools and uh, start drawing a few things. So my grid is already uh, it's already there so I can kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to just take the first line and draw the first line. So I'm just going to draw this point from this point to, to this point and uh, let's look at the line properties so I have this line and uh, I have all this information that tells me what you know what the line is about um, for example if I want to know how long this line is there's two things I can do I have this option here that says survey start survey and if I click on the line it's gonna tell me 8.1 meters uh, so that's one way I can figure out uh, you know if I want to get out of that menu I can double click outside of the object to deselect it and then it's gonna go away so that's one way so or the second way I can select the line and come to the data property and see the length information here 8.19 equally I can modify this length uh, this length from here from this menu I can call it uh, I can see I want it to be 10 instead and you can see it did update it and so now I have a line, a line that is 10 uh, 10 meters uh, so that's very easy to control the length of any line anytime so I select this line and I want it to be 20 meters right so I just enter the 20 uh, meters like this right so okay and each line has a name <clears throat> each object that you draw has a name has a name so I'm gonna delete this one and uh, we're gonna look at this one again so here I can also control uh, like with every object uh, the wireframe up uh, I can the view this the display mode so I can go to to point uh, in wireframe it's not gonna show, show us more because it's no difference between flat lines and wireframe for a line so uh, I can tell it to be dashed or um, dotted or again dash dot or you know for that matter change the color okay well that was the uh, uh, hold on. line color okay so there you go or uh, the line thickness I can change the line thickness so like like I said earlier I like this option a lot so just gonna give it leave it to the default property where they were before and also if you see here these tools here are the general tools for any object that you apply it with for example the thickness of the line is already one and uh, the opacity um, this is the font size um, of the object and then this is the color of the object so if I were to change this to maybe three and four you will see that any line that I draw here by default is going to have the, the this this properties um, as you can see here so this is where I can predefine the type of uh, the type of line initial settings um, right so I'm gonna set this back to default and probably set the line thickness back to two just like that and then I'm gonna delete all these new extra lines so the next thing I'm going to look at is um, the polyline um, it's called the draft wire or the D wire in free cats I'm gonna click on it and you can see that I can click from one point to another and I can basically uh, you know make a consistent connection of lines and I can click finish Okay. Okay. And uh, here as well, I have all the same controls, and I hope also have more information here as to for as how far I want to uh, control this object. But what's particularly interesting about the D wire is um, I have what they call here the camphor size and the Phyllis radius. So let's look at the Phyllis radius. So if I increase the fillet radius, um, let's go to I have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 
you can see how it, it gave this a radius right 0 0.1 meters so I'm gonna go to 2 5 and so on okay you see how it gave everything a radius so that's the fitted radius okay and so it, it's very smooth and this allows us to create very simple uh, shapes and and have very nice smooth rounded curves that are always parametric because you can always increase that as you need it um, of course like this you see it's pretty cool I think um, so um, the other thing is um, if I draw another one just as an example I can close it like that if I close it it creates a face it creates a face and in that face I can have it in two modes I can have it in make face mode true or make face mode false in which case it goes to the wire it gives me the ability to play with it as a wire instead um, and just like this are the mode you have the ability to control the radius right fillet radius okay you can see everything has been rounded all right so it's looking good like that uh, it's starting to look like a fancy table from the top view you know it's pretty cool okay um, okay what else can I tell you about and then for face mode I can control the opacity value so here there's a you know on view there's the transparency so I can set it maybe to 80 and you can see that it gives me this kind of opacity feel to it this is very good for designing plants and 2d furnitures and stuff like that and obviously you have the other options like the line the line you can always control uh, the radius of the line at any time and this is very perfect you know I want it to be uh, 1.5 meters okay so there you go it's perfect um, you know of course you've got all the properties that you can play around the placement allows you to control the position of the object in 3D space. So right now, this is the 3D geographic location of uh, the object in 3D space. So sometimes, instead of moving things um, with these options directly in 3D space, you can just precisely control the unit from here as well. So this is pretty cool to know as well. Okay. Um, likewise the axis controls the angle and the direction and the degree um, I can tell you more about that later when we have a need to use that um, alright so here's what I can tell it to be true or false as you can see alright true and uh, of course here we have um, the arc tool so I'm gonna draw a line and then I'm going to start from here and draw like this and this is a tool that we use a lot to create doors with you see it's very perfect to create a door so if I want to create a door I'm just going to draw one line like this and then another line like this and then I'm going to stretch this down um, with this tool the trim and then snap right here and then you can see that I already have a door so I can try it again on the other side like this and then I click right here or I go in this direction and so that's how I have my arc and likewise this is very easy to control you've got the radius property as well that you can always control so straightforward and here we have the ellipse as you can see I can always uh, control uh, these properties pretty cool as well okay <clears throat> 
and here you have uh, the polygon so right now it's set to 3 okay so it's a triangle so this is perfect for creating triangles um, so or I can increase the number of faces at any time as well and it gives me different geographic um, uh, geometric shapes that I want so this is pretty cool and I can control once again the size and more information so alright and obviously we have the square the square is amazing and we will be using it all the time it's straightforward and also you can control it at any time so here I just drew a box and I didn't you know take care of making sure it snapped right so I just select it again and I make it three by three and obviously if you take the survey tool you can um, check the area by clicking in this on the face or the edges length okay so there you go now um, then you have the text tool annotation tool it's called so to use that I just click in space and then I enter what I want to enter hello this is a tutorial demo and then I press enter one time and enter the second time and it gets the text in as you can see I have the text that appeared there and I'm going to select that test and come to the view and then increase the size with the font size I can just scroll and you can see how it's going to increase okay and maybe I want to make it 200 right um, I can make it right center or right justified some basic um, some basic settings the line spacing if you had more lines the rotation the axis and then the color as well you can change the color if you want to of course just like any other thing in FreeCAD and here you've got the font name you can change the font uh, maybe uh, I want to work only with Ubuntu font like this or I want to work with Arial like this so any font that is stored in your file system is going to be captured by uh, by this font name area this is how you control the font so this is looking good um what else and then you obviously have the dimension the dimension the dimension this guy so let's click on him I want to dimension from this point to this point so I'm gonna click on that point and I'm gonna click on that point and I drag my dimension and there you go I have a nice looking dimension there and obviously same thing applies I can change the font of this dimension you can say Ubuntu um, I can change the font size pretty easily um, I can change anything I want the color as well once again and I can change uh, the line width okay and I can change the arrow size make it smaller or I can change um, the arrow the, or the tick make it a tick you know some very basic settings but it allows you to already get a sense of what you can do I can flip uh, the arrows or I can flip the text uh, right and more things you can see I can tell it to have to show the unit or not to show the unit in this in this particular case and this is the offset value from the line to the edge so some basic control just like any other CAD program you're gonna have this basic control and obviously the position and the distance and all the information you need to know so that's that for that uh, for those tools we uh, this other tools are not going to be used quite often but they're going to be occasional times where we're going to use that and I'm going to tell you uh, when I think I use them the most 
um, but for this for but for for this general purpose, uh, this is already uh, good enough for what we're trying to do. So I'm going to select all of that and. I'm just going to hold and drag up and select all of that and then right click and then delete and I have a clean slate again alright so let me take a quick break and I'll be right back Welcome back. So, for the next part of this uh, adventure, I thought it would be interesting to start from maybe a project that I am familiar with because I did it myself and uh, I can easily talk about it. Um, so, this is the kind of uh, layout or result in terms of a uh, project that we will be trying to replicate. And obviously, this is not a complete project. As you can see, I don't even have the windows and I'll tell you what this is. This is a small competition project that I'm doing. Uh, so I'm not even uh, sure uh, how this is going to turn out in the sense, but I really like the idea of trying to work with small spaces. This is very challenging, and so this was a very small, a small project I decided to do, to do in FreeCAD because it felt like it's worthwhile the challenge to do it in FreeCAD, and so. Um, so this is it. So I'm just I'm still building up the project, and I'm not even sure what the end product is going to look like because you have to figure out a lot of things. But uh, I'm going to show you how you can get this far in terms of how you're going to work. So this is why I, I kind of brought this up. So uh, you can see uh, how the floor plan kind of looks, uh, particularly clean and stuff like that. And so um, so. So what's good is that um, the idea was is to create a small 45 square meter um, area and so with FreeCAD I can easily uh, create a few shapes to have an appreciation of what a 45 square meter space would look like and then I can easily eventually um, you know test out uh, the various the various ways that I can uh, uh, I can uh, lay it out t for more efficiency and see this is the trick about how we model in FreeCAD you know uh, you understanding how to be efficient with it you know because when you're modeling uh, in some of these 3D applications it's very hard to understand how to uh, make quick changes and up and 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 figure out quick layouts and 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 move fast you know we want to all jump into the 3d and all that stuff but usually you have to figure out you know the first basis for a lot of things is the floor plan how does it work in the floor plan everything needs to first have a sense floor plan wise before you can start to talk about the 3d and so this was a challenge in a way because i had not really ever created this kind of workflow so this was the first time for me to actually be able to do something like this um uh, it's very easy to work with, let's say, a program like Revit or some of these currently existing pro programs because you can just drag the walls, and you know AutoCAD has all these features where you can trim and trim and, and move things up and down. Revit, you can dr just drag the walls and play with the dimensions. But in FreeCAD, it's a whole different way of thinking. So, um, so I, you know, trying to understand how to play around with it, and it was quite a challenge and so I think this was a good project so right now I'm just swiping through to show you a little bit how I was figure on the layout and I'm going to kind of uh, take you into a process of building this kind of stuff it's not anything complicated it's just uh, um, you know just understanding what you're trying to do and knowing how to do it so I'm just going to quickly swipe through and uh, and, um, and sometimes I like to take pictures of the of what it looks like. You know, it has this artistic appeal to it. Um, some of the line weights look very interesting when you look at them from afar, and they look very 
uh, you know, they, it, it has its own language, it, it has its own feel, and uh, there's something very good about FreeCAD, it has its own identity, it doesn't try to look like the other programs, and so this is when I had to figure out one potential working floor plan already, so, you know, it's, and I'll kind of get down to it uh, and explain to you. So I'm trying to figure out the second floor plan, and all everything looks messy. You see, everything looks like you know I'm I'm trying to figure out things. You know, I'm trying to build out this area, trying to understand how it works, trying to break down a, a few things, understanding uh, uh, the the sense of what you're trying to create um, in FreeCAD, and then getting you know hitting your hitting your head against the wall until you get some kind of workflow that that allows you to generate some kind of consistent way of thinking and eventually it starts to, to, to make more sense you know you begin to have interesting shapes come out and 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 reveal itself and you can work with that okay so we're gonna try to see how and how we can get to this kind of result um, you know in this kind of floor plan layout so this kind of way of working in 2d all right. I thought that this was interesting. It looks like a face, you know. This is the guy's chin and all that, you know. And this kind of this kind this kind of futuristic, abstract, uh, humanoid face. <laughs> Anyways, so for the for the for the sake of this tutorial, I also opened the file itself here that I have to show you. You know, I can easily uh, refer to it uh, along the lines while we're working. So this is going to be our own space, um, and also I'm also going to be using this book, uh, Francis Dickey Ching, um, and I'm going to show you some a way to get some references. Um, so, all right. So let's hypothetically say that um, you wanted to work with a 45 square meter, and you had, uh, let's say, a uh, one bed, one living, one kitchen, one bed requirement to fit in that tiny kind of space and and uh, you were you know you were to start a little bit uh, with some confined spaces right uh, if you were to start with a confined space what will it look like and you have no idea what it would look like so the first thing you would do is you get into FreeCAD and you're gonna draw the space itself um, so I'm gonna draw a box you know I, you know this is my box this is the basic box the rectangle so here I have the dimensions of the rectangle um, and you know 45 is you know obviously 6 meters by 7.5 meters so you know so I'm gonna take my box and I'm gonna type the height 6 meters by 7.5 meters so this is my box right here. So this is the size of what, just one of the sizes that I'm working with. This, so this is how I know what I have to, as a space to work with. Okay. Now, I'm going to make it. Um, I'm going to tell it to fall to make face false because I just want to see the guidelines. I don't want. I just want to see the internal space, 45 square meter internally. Okay. So, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to have an idea of some of what I will call some assets, you know, some objects, some, uh, a few things. So, for example, I want to know um, what is my corridor width, things like that, okay? So, uh, a good example would be where I'm going to come and refer to uh, Dickie Ching, for example, where I'm going to... Uh, look for um, I'm going to look for the door width or a, a corridor you know this the dimensions of a human being but architects already know these things I already know it but I would want to show you how you can get to these kinds of information how you can figure out something that's good for you to work with if you have no idea of what you're working with so um, so instead of coming here, actually, I'm going to go to the website and I'm going to type here human dimensions. And I'm going to go to image. And um, 
I'm going to look at a few things here that tell me the dimensions. Um, assuming that they're more or less accurate for what I'm trying to do. This is why I use uh, this book, but uh, not everyone is going to have the notion of thinking about using that book. Um, so we have to find some good information, something that gives you uh, information you can work with in terms of height, length, width, sizes. Um, okay, so I'm going to look for it and then uh, get back at you. All right, so I brought up the picture of what we're looking for in the book, in the book Dicky Ching. So this is a bit what we're looking for. We're looking for human dimensions, and we're looking for, uh, you know, this gives you gives us an idea. Um, it's a kind of, it's a bit blurry. Let me um, a zero two. Well, we're gonna use the picture I found. Okay, so it it's it's um a human dimension is five feet by six and a half inches max or uh one point five meters by one point eight meters approximately. So we can say that uh the height um you know a sensible height will be two meters since we work in meters or uh, a general height of walls that is standard these days is three meters okay so this is good um, and then you want to know things like this you know if a human is standing sideways there are two in, two feet by two inches of you know of minimal space that you need for comfort or if they're standing uh, front wise it's three feet ten you know and or one foot one meters 1.7 meters so uh, 1.17 meters so in the sense you want to uh, you know this is why the standard for corridors is four feet in US you know in, in US standard um, it's four feet so anything less than four feet sometimes not meet core requirements for corridors and also in meters it will be 1.2 meters so we want to take that reference into account when we're working free cat so we want to say okay we want a box that's going to be um, let's say uh, 1.2 meters wide, uh, 1.2, okay, by 1.2. Okay, so that's gonna help us guide us with whatever relates relates to the corridor space that we need in terms of circulation. Okay, um, and then uh, and then what else? <clears throat> so this just tells you what two people look like and three people and stuff like that, and um, you know and what sitting look like you know seats look like and also here you would also um, have uh, some of the seating position you know uh, you know some of the best dimension uh, 39 inch so 9.9 .9 meters by um, by 80 inches to 84 inches you know so for the height so this gives you some general basic plan dimension that you can work with that are standard already so uh, if you want to also find those you can just basically type in uh, uh, chair dimensions um, and um, you can say well I want I want to know what the dimensions of a chair is so this this uh, we want to look for it in meters because this is in inches. Um, so, um, let's say, uh, let's look for a good one. This is, is so far. So he says uh, 56 centimeters by 50 by 56 centimeters. Okay, for this little stool, and then for the chair itself is uh, 40 centimeter. Uh, 40 centimeters by 77 centimeters. All right, so we can load that. So I'm just gonna take this box and then duplicate that. I'm gonna check the move and then copy and then move one copy on the side. And uh, this is going to be my uh, my chair. So I'm going to tell it to be 
um, 40 centimeters by 77 so I'm gonna come here and type in 40 cm all right and I'm gonna come here and type in 77 cm like so looks like a very interesting tiny chair <laughs> okay so what was the other one All right, the other one was the stool itself. Well, that chair does not make quite some sense. It's a bit tiny in a way. 77 centimeter by 40 centimeter. That's too, that's too small. I want a better looking chair in terms of dimensions. Well, I'm just going to go with uh, this picture. It's gonna be just easy since I already have it okay um, let's see so for so far I have um, for an armchair I have uh, 0.565 meters so I'm going to type in here Five six five and five six. Okay, so that looks good. That's my chair. Okay, and the next thing, the next thing is um, maybe I want to draw this. I'm gonna draw a box, um, forty eight, or maybe I want to make it uh, one point two meters right so I'm gonna take that and duplicate that copy that and in this one I'm gonna make it 1.2 meters okay and he says the max is um uh, 2.845 so let's actually try 2.8 2.8 all right oops that's not right well yeah well I guess it's right so but we're gonna go for a smaller dimension Okay, so um, so this is my armchair dimension. So it's um, uh, 0.585. Okay, so I have my 0.585 here. 0.58. 0 0.58 that. All right, so <coughs> we're gonna draw it. We're gonna draw the 2D representation. So um, it has this very tiny uh, um, edged edge to it. Um, so I'm going to come into FreeCAD. I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to come to make falls in terms of face, and then I'm select the line again, and I'm going to take the offset tool right here. And then I'm going to offset it by maybe um, something that looks approximately like it's accurate. <coughs> so we're going to say maybe, um, you know, 50 millimeters. And I'm going to copy. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to offset by 50 millimeters. Or let's say 40 millimeters. Like this. And so now I have that internal space. And so now I can model the contour of that. So I'm going to take that guy again and make it false as well. So I can see what's going on. <coughs> so um, I'm going to take uh, the polyline tool. Um, like this. I'm going to click right here. Click right here. Right here. 
and so on all the edges and then here I'm gonna snap onto um, the extension but I'm gonna turn off um, well I'm gonna click here and then click here click here and then click here and then here I can take this guy and uh, okay go back to um, I can either double click here and it opens the menu where I can grab this and snap it right there and finish that and there you go and then what else are we missing uh, probably two lines towards the back and uh, I can just uh, draw a box maybe start from here and um, you know snap it right there uh, take that box and I can see that the height of it uh, is 50 and the width and the length is 25 so I want it to be 10 and uh, well maybe I want to make it um, a little bit more smaller than that maybe 75 okay hold on just delete that Snap right there. And then I'm gonna take this guy and uh, zero seven. Okay. And, <clears throat> and so I'm going to um, I'm going to copy that. copy like this all right and and uh, lastly I'm going to probably draw a line here like this or uh, yeah and then I'm gonna take another box and do this okay so now I can delete that line and now these two rectangles that I initially started with I can just move them on the side I don't want to copy so I uncheck this and I grab them from anywhere and then just move them onto the side like so and so now I have all the all the shapes that constitute that constitute the sofa uh, that we just saw there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them like this select all and I'm going to go to the part design come to the part and then I'm going to um, I'm going to create compound make a compound so now I have one object okay so you can see that that object has a tree now which relates to all of them and I can rename that compound I will rename it armchair arm chair like this and so if I were to make a copy of it I'm gonna go back to the architecture workbench I'm going to make a copy of it right click here, click here and then copy So the second armchair loses all of the link that the first one had. So now I can I can move this independently. So now I'm going to select this one and also come to the transparency value and make it 80. 
and so this is how I have my furniture and I can also select it and uh, come here and change the line width um, make it one and this is how I have my furniture okay so that's for my furniture I can uh, I can make a copy of him again and move him around here as one of my objects now I want to create um, I want to create the sofa you know maybe three sofa so to create a three sofa I'm going to base myself from one of these sketches again so I want all these internal dimensions to be the same so what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to move it copy or maybe not I'm going to select this edge and then snap it at this other internal edge so that it gives me this internal space divided by one line in the middle and then this internal space and I'm going to do the same thing and then make another copy this time copy so I'm going to snap from here to uh, to right here all right and I'm going to take this line I'm going to get in there I'm going to hide that not this guy not this guy not this guy not this guy so I'm pressing space bar to show them I'm going to select this guy and then I'm going to double click on it and I'm just gonna drag this line and stretch it as you see like this um, so right now I'm trying to, s to snap on this edge but you see it's not trying to, sma s to snap there so I'm gonna turn off a few snaps that are uh, probably uh, responsible for that so now I can see that uh, I have this extension that keeps popping I don't want it to show up I have this equal thing I don't want it to show up and then I have this uh, perpendicular uh, probably uh, is it the perpendicular or the plus so this is this guy it's uh, the ortho I don't want him to show up um, okay probably it's not snapping because uh, this line is um, is a face so I'm going to change him to wire make face false alright so now it's probably gonna be much easier to snap so I'm gonna double click on it again so I'm gonna select that and snap it there like this and then select that and snap it there like that okay and then finish I can make him a face again true alright so this um, internal um, objects I can hide this for now and then bring back those hidden objects this guy I can double click um, or maybe before I do that I want to create the, the dividers so I'm just gonna select a line tool and then click on this edge and then click another edge and draw that line I can hide this so you can see the line and I can take this line and make a copy of that line click here copy and then um, probably click from this edge onto this other line so I have a nice division of three so now I can bring back these other objects I can um, <clears throat> double click on here and now take my my box and stretch it all the way down like this and it, and it moves the upper end I take the upper end and I stretch it back um, till it snaps there again like so and then I, I say finish I do the same thing for this one um, I modify it just stretch it down like so and then like so and then this one finish and then this one do the same thing like so and like so 
Okay. So there you have it. I have a, uh, I have um, my armchair. So now I can turn these sub objects off, like this, and turn on this object because it updated the armchair. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to make a copy of this armchair and call it something else. So I'm going to select this armchair and then select the two lines that I drew along with it. This line and this line. And then make a copy. Copy. All right. So now the armchair is one unit so what I want to do is rename it well what I want to do first is combine all of them into one object like this I'm going to go back to the part workbench and then go to um, make a compound okay so I have a compound now and so I just want to break the link of that compound so I have one object so I'm going to first rename the the compound object I'm going to rename it sofa okay rename it sofa like that okay and then I'm going to copy that onto the side again one more time And here I can I have a nice clean sofa that is just one object and I can also obviously um, change the transparency to 80% and probably the line width to one and there you have it uh, I can uh, I can move that sofa right next to it move it and I don't want to copy it this time so now I, I have a sofa so now I can get rid of all of these other objects that I used to draw. Um, I can just uh, edit box selection. Undo that. Um, delete. Delete, 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 and delete, and delete this one as well, and delete this one as well, and delete that. Okay. So you see how we've created a, a nice um, object. It's called Sofa here. We can rename it here again one more time. Okay, Sofa. And this is going to be armchair. We seem to have another armchair there and another one here. So we want to delete those two guys as well. All right, so now we have a nice armchair. Uh, that we can start to use and we can save this and always reuse it all the time okay so this is an this is an asset that you can always reuse all the time so um, so that's it so I'm gonna take a short break real quick guys so the next part of this is that we want to go ahead and quickly um, model some of the remaining features uh, that you see here for example let's say door um, um, some of the other chairs and um, the, the sink maybe and um, you know the toilet and so let's do that pretty quickly 
Um, this should be this should be fairly easy now that we have a general idea of how to model some of these things. So maybe I'm going to start with with the sink. Um, so I want to get some general dimensions of what the sink is all about. So let me just uh, try to type in um, kitchen sink dimensions right here and see what comes up. Okay, so I have a few things here. Um, but once again, I'm going to look for something with uh, some millimeters value. And this one is not so much important because so so crazy because um, you know it, it varies the dimensions varies by manufacturer and also by designer so but you want to get something that's just general for now um, so this one looked like a pretty good um, hold on this one for example okay this one looks like a very good uh, one that we could uh, we could go by um, so let's just uh, analyze the shape a little bit so we have here um, a dimension of one meters uh, one 1 1.12 meters by about 0 0.51 meters so let's do that real quick so let's go back into our drawing and then let's draw another box again very small one okay and then let's call it uh, let's go to the data and here we have um, the length 1.12 and uh, 0 0.51 0 0.51 okay so that's it right there and um, and let's look at it again um, so we have um, this internal basin um, it's about 0 0.375 by 0 0.375 so let's go back to FreeCAD and let's just draw another box on the side okay uh, this box is gonna be uh, hold on 0 0.375 meters or 0 0.378 0 0.3 Eight, like this okay and then what else and then this other one is uh, 300 by 370 okay so I'm gonna take this one and duplicate it on the side like this uh, take that and copy check copy and move that on the side take this one and on the land I want it to be um, maybe uh, 300 so take that off maybe not that one 8 here and 0 here so there we go um, okay and then what else I think that's about it and it's this little um, dimension in the offset uh, we can just uh, be arbitrary for that one so now maybe um, we want to align that with the center so I'm gonna take my align tool and then just snap at the center and just draw a small line there and then take this guy and probably grab him at the center there and then snap him there as well I still have the copy command that's why I copied that so I'm gonna delete the previous copy and then um, so what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to create the offset value from the edge um, so Let's see. I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna maybe copy this and snap it right there. Take this guy, probably make him a false face. Uh, this guy as well, false. And then take this guy and offset him, certain value. Okay, that seems to work just fine. And I didn't get the copy tool so offset and copy right here all right looks good so now I can just take this guy and move him once again undo the copy and just move him onto the side here like this and there you go and um, so I can use this spatial configuration uh, this space as a, a standard so I can just 
grab a box tool and then draw a box there and then take this box and then move him right here and then take this guy and then move him right at the edge of this box um, okay so it doesn't snap because this guy's in the true fail so I'm gonna make him false and take this guy again and then move him like this and like that so there you go and make him false there you go and so now I can delete this guy he's not useful or maybe he could be useful again I'm just gonna keep him for now I, I don't need this guy anymore um, so um, so now uh, what else you can see that it's got some uh, few rounded corners as well so uh, what we can do about that is we can um, we can select this and then um, fillet radius um, I'm going to tell it to be probably um, let's try 10 it's pretty small I'm going to do uh, 20 um, maybe 40 okay this, this looks good and this guy as well probably go to 20 um, 40 as well 40 and this guy as well 40 millimeters so just out of 4 there and everything looks good press this and hide that and I'm starting to have something decent um, Okay, so <clears throat> now what I want to do is just, uh, I guess, just simply draw a circle. Um, I can bring this guy back, take this tool, maybe draw a circle right here, um, give it a specific radius. Maybe I want it to be 30 or 20 maybe, like so. Okay, so I'm going to take a line and then take a line and draw a line right here and then take this small circle and then move him from here and snap him to the middle there is it looking good enough yeah it's gonna do the job and then what I can do next is I can mirror that circle or I can just uh, just copy the same thing select both of them and then hit copy and then snap it from here to here so now I have um, a sink something that looks like a sink and so another one last thing that I could potentially do is uh, probably copy this guy right here like so okay and then make him a little bit thinner um, probably um, uh, probably um, let's say 20 here or um, maybe 15 I guess all right and and so I'm gonna move him by, f by just a few by about this distance mmm okay whatever looks good so I'm going to remove the radius that it has and I am going to make face true and I'm going to shrink its size um, probably uh, uh, maybe 20 like this and also center it as well like that and then take them take take that grab him from the middle and just uh, move him to the middle and then I can delete this line and so what I want to do with this I want to come right here which is columns I want to add a column uh, probably not the column sorry uh, rows I want to add a few rows like this uh, it's starting to look good another maybe 10 okay 10 is good enough so now I want to um, 
let's see what that looks like um, right here it's just a bunch of lines uh, maybe if I made face false what do we have here and if I delete this what do we have hmm it's decent um, honest and personally I prefer the sync without this but it's whatever for now okay so the sync is not yet done uh, because if we were to show face uh, make face true um, face true and then um, so we can select that make face false and then select this face true and then face true alright so like that so face true so that's our sync um, let's look at the dimensions 0 0.51 it's good it's looking good um okay so I'm gonna delete that uh, delete this delete this and honestly I don't like this I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna bring back this sync right now okay so right now So right now all these objects, pressing shift I can select all of them. Um, right now I can leave the drawing like as it is right now. It's very simple, it's basic. Uh, I, I can leave it the way it is. I can just come here and change the transparency value um, where I have 80 here. And uh, this is what you could be looking at. So what's going on here? 80 as well. 80 as well and 80 okay so there you go so um so I can leave it like this it's gonna do the job for what we're trying to do or I can break it down further where I could just instead of having a combination of objects I can just uh, dissect this some more so let me show you what I mean um, let me select all of this and then take this and move a copy onto the side so I'm gonna move a copy right there so here what I can do is let me hide this hide this hide this hide this so I'm gonna start with this guy and this and and uh, this guy no not that guy that guy okay so I'm gonna start with these two I can make a hole so I'm gonna select this guy and this guy and then grab this tool and I'm gonna make a hole so right there I have made a hole uh, for that object right um, so I can always update that so now I'm gonna bring the other guy in I'm gonna do the same thing select the larger face um, select the larger face and then select the smaller face and then bring uh, use the explode command and it's gonna create the hole so I have that now I have the bigger circle so the bigger circle is 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 um the bigger rectangle uh, I can I, I can cut the same thing through so I'm going to bring him out and then I'm going to select this face uh, well I'm going to select the uh, uh, with which way comes first uh, let's try I'm gonna select this and then that and then drop that okay so that's what it created it looks funky <laughs> uh, okay and then I'm gonna select this guy and then this guy and do that and so there you go um, that's what I meant when I said I can either break it down some more and have this just this simple shape with uh, this feel to it rather than have all of these objects right so it's really uh, it really depends on on how you want to work with these things so now you can see I have one object there 
and it and this is the one that retains all the links so this is the one you can always modify so it really depends but honestly I do prefer this one quite a lot um, so for this one what I'm going to instead do since they're all broken down like this alright so is that I am going to um, I am going to go to our familiar part workbench and go to make compound and I'm gonna make a compound and so now I have a nice compound right there and this compound as well if I want it to be one object I can just copy oops I can just select the compound and copy him as well I don't know why I'm selecting just that and then copy and it's selecting my not sure why it's selecting this box. Hold on. Oh, this box is included uh, in the compound. So I'm going to delete this compound and I'm going to break them out and I'm just going to select all of this and go back to the part workbench, compound, make compound, and I have a nice compound and I can break the compound into a simple object by just making a copy of it and there you go just like this one I have a nice compound just like that one so it really depends on what you want to do so well maybe I don't want too many objects so I'm just gonna delete the ones that have retained the the, the processes so I'm gonna select that and select that delete and then select this guys I'm gonna open the tree view because all of the objects needs to be deleted and eh, delete nice and so now I'm left with simple objects so now I can simply rename this one sync sync and I guess sync here as well um, sync sync rename right here rename sync so okay so there you go we got our sync um, and then change the line width down a bit good it's looking good it's looking good so now we want to draw our countertop generally speaking our kitchen countertop are six um, six uh, 0 0.6 meters wide uh, standard so I'm gonna just enter that value here uh, 0 0.6 meter uh, where are you 0 0.6 and there you go so that makes a good uh, kitchen kitchen countertop and uh, I'm going to make it uh, false for the face and then I'm gonna grab this guy and just um, maybe move him uh, inside so it just looks like it belongs somewhere and uh, probably move him to the middle like this all right that that looks good and delete that and and this one make true and I'm gonna give him a transparent value of 80 as well there you go and the line width of 1 there you go and so for the countertops as well I'm going to do the same thing I'm gonna take this one I'm going to copy and I'm gonna paste him same thing but here I'm gonna just change um, the <coughs> I'm just gonna change the thickness to 30 like this so there you go and um, I want to move him to the top hold on make face false okay make face false 
take this guy and move him to the top like this and then I want to give him a, uh, a dashed line uh, draw star dashed okay so it looks good um and also I want to give him a a um, instead of uh, I want to give him I want to give him a uh, a, a wireframe line and this guy I want to bring back the face true so now I have a good representation of a kitchen and so this allows me to always modify it when I want so I can just click there and uh, double click and, ju and just change the the length of you know the, the countertop at you know depending on what I want to do so that's good already so we've got our kitchen okay bring him back I'm missing a snapping option here uh, for some reason Uh, this guy is in wireframe, but still make face false. Okay, let's try this one more time. I'm missing a snapping option here. Um, or I can just draw another box. Interesting. So this is something I'm noticing with FreeCAD is that uh, we don't yet have an option to tell it which object is above another object or maybe we do and I am not familiar with it because it does recognize when an object is above another one and so if there's a large, if there's, a, if there's an object uh, above this one and I'm trying to let's say um, snap, snap an object that I'm drawing on top of this surface it's not going to you know to a not to an object here it's not going to be able to uh, read that so maybe that's something that uh, we can fix and stuff so okay so that's our kitchen all right so let's save that it's looking good so what else are we missing well we are missing maybe a table a table a table is, is an easy one um, we can just uh, look in some table dimensions. So uh, a low table dimension probably has a 0.585 uh, dimension by um, 1145. So I'm just going to draw that. Um, 0.5 eight by one point one two five I guess or maybe forty five of you know maybe forty five doesn't make a big difference and so I come here to Transparency 80 and line uh, line width 1. Okay, so that's our table. This is a very simple one. So let's position him with the rest of the objects. So put him here with the tape with the couch. Um, I'm going to rotate that like this. All right, and then press Shift to lock it into that angle. Otherwise, it's going to be trying to move around and I want it to lock it in the direction or I can type it 90 degrees here and enter so now I can move it um, Well, I'm going to move it at the center the cop uh, here All right, and then I'm going to give it a gentle spacing 
um, gentle foot spacing probably of uh, 0 0.2 meters oh well this is already good enough okay so that's our table what are we missing um, we are probably missing okay a toilet a shower and a bed okay a toilet a shower and a bed okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to model the toilet so we're gonna look good we're gonna look for some dimension toilet dimensions all right I'm gonna look for some good dimensions this looks good this looks pretty good as well um, as a modeling exercise let me see if there's not any other one that looks better let's look at this one yeah fairly simple um, but maybe this one let's look at this one view file okay so we have here a basic plan um, we have here 370 660 and 4 overall and then we have here um, 360 so let's draw this one um, so we know that our, our length uh, overall height is 660 so let's go back to our model and draw that I'm gonna take it this the square command um, draw that and get say height I'm gonna say um, 0 0.66 right there and I am going to look at the other one um, by 360 right okay so this is 0 0.36 there you go okay so I'm going to make that false that's the total size and then what else can I have as information um, so it seems that everything else seems to be arbitrary almost to, the, to an eye level kind of deal alright so I'm gonna select this rectangle and I'm gonna make a copy of it I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it alright and on the second copy I'm gonna change the height I'm gonna bring it down to maybe um, let's look at five or four okay this looks good um, I'm gonna select this guy and then copy him copy and paste and this other guy I'm gonna tell him to be maybe 3 or 10 right or yes hold on let's see um, maybe 20 I'm going to move him to the top okay that looks good okay so I'm gonna take this rectangle and hide him a little bit so I have two objects so now I'm, I can take this object and I'm gonna copy that copy I'm gonna paste him um, what, what just happened it seems that I deleted him instead so paste him so I have two of them alright so I'm gonna hide one of them and then this guy I'm going to come here to radius I'm gonna type in one uh, maybe it's too small let's see that so one meter is way too big so 
I want a very nice smooth radius so I'm going to try uh, 10 millimeters so, alright it started to reveal itself so we need to increase that I'm gonna to go to 100 okay it's looking good uh, look at look at um, our curve it's a very smooth curve so I am going to increase that by um, by two? Nope. That's not what I was trying to do. Go back to one. Okay, so let's say 1.5, uh, 1 1.6, 7. Okay, this is good enough for what we're trying to do. Um, anything more than that is not, it's just going to screw it up. So now we have that we want to um, explode this rectangle. So I'm going to take that, select the rectangle, and I'm going to um, explode the rectangle. So you can see it created all these individual edges. Okay, so I don't want these edges. I'm going to delete this guy, delete this guy, delete this guy, delete this guy, and um, delete that guy. So now all I'm left with is this. Okay. Looking good. So I'm going to bring back this other guy that I um, I was hiding. And this guy as well, I'm going to explode him. And so I'm going to um, just delete this line. And for this line, um, I'm going to ex stretch it till it snaps here. I will do the same thing with this guy stretch it till it snaps to the edge of that line and this is how I have all this um, I have this nice curve so now I can uh, select all of this and build it back together into one object I weld it together and then bring it back uh, into a face right there so that's it this is our face um, looking good now uh, we want to do the same thing more or less with this guy but with this guy is going to be much more simple we can just give it a very smooth curve and uh, that should probably be good enough so we're going to put it at um, maybe uh, 20 or uh, let's see 60 okay that looks good it's good enough for what we're trying to do and then make face of course uh, true and take these two objects um, go to the part and what are we gonna do what are we gonna do part compound make compound and then we have our compound you can rename it uh, toilet there you go it's looking good and then go back to the architecture and then select select that move a copy of it and so this is our copy line width change the line width and bring the transparency value to 80 and there you go we have our toilet looking good so we can delete that delete that and delete that okay now we were missing our bed I think um, so uh, we have a bed here and then we have um, we have a shower and we have shelving so but you basically get the general idea of how this begins to work. Um, so I'm going to pause from here and then get the other drawings uh, done pretty quickly so that we can save some time.
guys so following uh, the modeling of uh, the the toilet um, I want to show you something so here's for example view file here's for example uh, an example of a way to position uh, something to have in mind uh, so you know it gives you a pretty good uh, idea of the, the placement of of the toilet in bathroom so it tells you that uh, if you want some you know if you want to meet code requirements and also ergonomic requirements um, with this uh, guardrail handrail whatever you want to call it especially for people with wheelchair uh, you must offset the the toilet by uh, 455 uh, um, 0.455 meters off the wall right so uh, we're gonna try to do that here as well so that our, our object meets the requirement so um, I'm just going to draw a little hypothetical box here and then I'm, I have um, I have uh, the I'm gonna make the box um, false face in terms of face and then I'm gonna select this and then I'm going to move it inside like this snap right there and then uh, move it on the top end okay so it's telling me that um, the ADA access is from the center of the toilet all the way to the edge so that means that um, I'm going to draw a line from this edge and I'm going to just uh, snap it right here and then I'm going to give it the dimensions the length of the of the line it's that so I'm gonna put uh, 445 hold on uh, 0.45 so it's 0 0.45 sorry about that um, hold on so I want to draw um, 0 0.45 like that and 0 0.45 like that so I want to just um, take this and snap it right here so basically I know that uh, from this center to the center okay and so now I can move this up here like, do, like that so now I can delete that and now I know that um, I must maintain this edge on the side so maybe I can uh, probably draw a box as a reference and then I'm going to go to the architecture draft actually I'll move that right there and then select this line and then grab the mirror tool and draw a line there so there I know that um, my object fits well in its place okay so that's one little detail that I wanted to show you so now um, one thing that we didn't model was the door um, let's look at a door here this is a, a standard uh, this is some standard door dimensions um, so Typically in the U.S., uh, some of the door heights, the standard door height is seven foot. So we're going to be working with that. But probably since we're working in meters, we're going to work with 2.1 meters height. And as, as far as the width, the standard width in America is uh, three foot wide. Um, but here it's uh, in millimeters is nine. It's 0.915. So we're going to work with that as well. Or uh, maybe we're just going to work with 0.90. Uh, that seems to be the standard so here how is that gonna work so first I'm going to draw uh, my line 
um, here I'm going to draw a line that is um, I'm going to call it length uh, 0 0.9 <clears throat> Okay, that's my length, 0 0.9. Um, and the next thing I want to do is I want to draw my arc. Or maybe I want to draw thickness. Yeah, I want to draw the arc. Let's go with the arc first. Or, um, well, maybe um, maybe the door, the door width. So let's get some reference here here it says 35 or 45 uh, centimeters thick okay so back in FreeCAD I'm going to tell it to be um, 45 centimeter thick okay it's giving me I'm gonna put a C right here Um, no, that's not the millimeters. I don't want it to be in millimeters. I want it in centimeters. All right, that's what I want. So now I want the height of that door um, to be 0 0.9. That's it. Um, so now I want to move it. Um, I want to move this edge right here. And so, so how does the door swing go? The door swing go goes from this edge to this edge. So it locks down like this. So I want to take the arc and start from right here and snap right here and snap right there and just draw a line like that so that's my door it's looking good um, so now I want to draw uh, the little um, uh, wood on the side so if I am assuming that my wall it's let's say uh, 1.5 uh, I'm going to assume that my wall is maybe uh, 0 0.2 meters thick like that and I'm first gonna create the dimension 0 0.2 okay so now uh, that that I got a thickness I um, I probably wanted to uh, to be uh, maybe what 10 millimeters 10 centimeters wide like this so now uh, I can move this right there. But it's still kind of too thick, so I'm going to um, zero one. Um, so ten millimeters. Um, generally, they are fifteen centimeters, but anywhere from ten centimeters to fifteen centimeters. So. I'm just gonna put a C here and um, let's see no I'm gonna make this 5 0 5 and I'm gonna copy this on the other side like that so that's my door that's my door so that's everything that's going to allow me to control my door so now I can um, I can select everything and then go to the part workbench and part um, make compound in this compound I'm gonna call it door rename and I'm gonna type door door 90 cm okay 
um, let's actually verify that's actually 90 cm okay so I'm gonna go to the architecture since I've already exploded this and I copied it it lost its uh, properties so I'm gonna verify the land okay so it's all good so that's my door um, so what I can do as well is create different orientation of the door I'm going to go to to the um, to the draft again one more time and I'm going to select uh, this tool the mirror and I'm just going to mirror this right here and I'm going to select these two guys and um, mirror them right there so this allows me to always have a handy door selection right in any kind of orientation and by the way I am missing another thing um, I so I have to select this uh, and also copy this on the side like this okay and then select it one more time like this and then rotate my doors by uh, 90 degrees so then I can always have a way to copy um, a way to copy the door in any kind of orientation that I want to so that's for the most part the gist of it um, we haven't drawn the bed yet uh, that's a very minute detail we can always um, figure that out easily uh, this is something like, well let's actually do that real quickly so we have a 990 uh, let's do that um, okay so we have a bed here let's tell it to be um, well maybe we want to do um, maybe we want to do um, the queen the queen size bed so we're gonna work with 1370 1.37 so we're gonna tell it 1.37 and the height is um, it says anywhere from 80 to 84 so we're going to work with 2135 so 2135 here 2135 so 2.135 okay so there you go so that's our bed um, what else there so we can create the pillow um, so just to create the line um, uh, let's say we can duplicate this line uh, copy paste um, so I, I select that line I probably reduce the height a little bit uh, probably go down to 1.8 uh, maybe that's too short that's too that's not short enough maybe 1.4 okay that's better better and make this um, a false face so we can be, be able to select things above it and I'm going to just quickly draw um, I'm gonna look at the center here just so I have a reference a, a just a view visual reference and I am going to draw a pillow like case here um, give it some decent dimensions 0.25 by 0.5 okay that looks good so I'm also just gonna um, uh, locate it um, I need an extra snap to something here um, gonna turn those off um, probably turn off the grid no maybe not center I'm gonna turn that off turn that off um, what is this one this is the intersection I might leave that on perpendicular let's see what happens um, still not snapping onto the edge something is not right um, extension and point midpoint perpendicular um, let's see ortho I guess I was missing ortho okay 
there you go so I select this guy select this midpoint uncheck the copy and click right there and also it looks good so delete that line select this guy mirror that onto the other side and there you go and uh, the next thing is um, probably do the little triangle thing um, so I'm going to select this um, polygonal face and then uh, tell it to have three sides and then I'm going I'm just gonna draw draw that right there that's enough you know the radius is enough so I'm just gonna select that um, so what do I want to do uh, let's see well that's not what I had to do what I had to do was probably draw a box here like this um, and probably also make this false and so I can now uh, draw a line here like this and then I can explode this I can delete that actually and I can just simply draw a polygon here like that alright undo that and just click there so it's looking good so I can delete the line I don't need that anymore so I have my nice looking polygon I can delete that I can actually increase the size of this guy back maybe to 1.8 again or no maybe 1.7 this or maybe 1.6 and then take this guy and simply move him up like this so now everything's looking good so bring my ships back together um, make fails again true okay and um, this guy make face again true okay so that's my bed so I can select all of those guys Select all those guys and make a copy on the side. Obviously, this mirror doesn't want to be selected, so I'm going to select it and then select that and that. And so, make a copy on the side. Okay, so it's lost all of. Uh, it's lost all of uh, its memory um, so what we're gonna do now is convert that into let's go to part workbench part uh, compound make compound so now we have a nice compound so we're gonna call it rename we're gonna call it bed simple um, so now that we have bed so we can uh, uh, to simplify that we can copy that again one more time copy that so now everything just looks at one piece and so now we can control um, the transparency value as well pretty easily okay okay so now I can delete this delete that okay so now everything's deleted so now we have a nice looking bed so we can move him around let's put him next to the other furnitures uncheck the copy move him right here bring down the line width to one and everything looks good um as for um as for the bathroom sink um we can simply do a quick one a quick simple one um let's see here we can just um, let's use this dimension as a reference uh, I don't remember exactly what it was so I'm gonna get this dimensions 0 0.3 wide by uh, 0 0.38 wide so 
I'm going to just draw 0 0.3 by 0 0.38 looking good good so I am going to um, give it some kind of fillet radius uh, probably 10 too small 30 M okay so 30 like so does it look good um maybe increase that a little bit more 50 uh, yeah well we're gonna work with this um so i'm going to offset that a little bit i'm going to make a copy and then offset that by maybe uh 12 millimeters there you go and um the next thing is probably um, is probably draw a, a hole, make face false, true, okay, false. And then I'm just going to draw a small hole on that center right there. Um, not that. Close that. Select a circle. And I'm going to select um, a cancel. I'm going to select the nearest and the snap. How did you get all the way there? Okay, so I'm going to select this nearest when I draw. So I'm going to select that. So you see it snaps everywhere. So I'm going to select the nearest. So it, it allows me to, to draw anywhere. So I'm just going to do that. Perfect. All right. Now I can delete this. I don't need that anymore. OK. So true. And so I'm going to select that. And I'm going to select that select that and select that and I can just oops I made a mistake of selection so I select the large guy and then shift select a small guy and then I and then I press the down button and it creates my nice look my nice hole and uh, that's my bathroom sink and so now I can just um, copy these two objects and simplify them copy that to the side simplify that so I have my two objects and I can go to the part design and uh, make it compound as well rename bat sync Okay, so there you go. So I can simplify that again. Architecture and copy that. Okay, so I can delete this, delete this, delete that. I have one object there. I can delete this, delete that, delete this, and delete this. And I don't need these two dimensions anymore, so I'm going to delete them as well. Okay, so I can uh, just uh, rename that. It looks a little bit clean. Okay, so I can also um, put its transparency to 80 and change the line width back to 1. And I want it to look like that, so everything is looking clean. So now I more or less have some of my assets. The only thing now that I think I'm missing is probably the the um, this the bathroom shower. So once again, we're gonna come here and type in um, bathroom shower dimensions. Uh, 
uh, where I'm gonna say shower style dimension Okay, so I have a few ones here. Um, it's giving me uh, this one right here. Let me see if I can view that file. Okay, so the, this is in inches. I want something in meters. Otherwise, that would have been a good one. Uh, this one as well as in inches. I mean, I could, you know, actually convert these values and get them in meters, but I just wanted to just pick something directly because this is a basic tutorial I don't want to get into uh, doing a lot of complex complex complexity complex calculations and conversions and stuff like that for no reason so um, I'm looking for a good one uh, metric so maybe I should precise that I want it to be metric um, that's still in um, let's see what this one is okay so you have a good one here actually it tells you so it gives you a few options it tells you that this width here's point it's nine uh, point nine meters by point nine meters wide so that's all we need to know um, I could have easily measured all the things that I did, but I just wanted to show you once again. So I'm going to draw that. Um, just going to draw my box there and then tell it to be 0 0.9 by 0 0.9. As simple as that. And I can probably uh, go to the, the make face, make uh, false, just so I can work in and out of it. I can select that and I'm going to offset a copy inside by a very tiny margin maybe uh, 30 millimeters sounds good like this make this guy false again and all I have to do now is probably draw a line and another line now I'm not gonna put the whole uh, the direction of the drain because you know it's it you know it allows me to just model in any direction and place it where I want without wonder without worrying where the hole is going to be placed so this I am going to bring back those other faces true and true and all of them I'm going to combine them once again um, so as you can see we're moving back and forth between the architecture and draft workbench uh, quite often um, some of these tools are interchangeable so um, it's just that uh, you uh, have has converted some of the part tools into the architecture tools but some of these tools are the same thing um, if you know exactly what they do um, so I'm going to copy that again to copy that and move that on the side to make a simple copy and I'm going to rename that I'm going to call it shower it's very simple and then move that on the side again and it's a simple copy so actually I didn't need to move that twice so I'm gonna delete the original version which has all the um, the initial drawings delete that delete that and delete this line so now I have this guy and I will play with its uh, transparency value 80 see it's looking good and I am going to also change this line width to 1 so now we are almost ready to play with some stuff here so I'm gonna put him right here um, that was a copy uh, delete it move that uncheck that and move that right here so there you go so this is what our assets will look like so now I just have to um, to make everything look a little bit cleaner um, so right here I'm gonna delete that that's unnecessary so I'm gonna right click here and I am going to create create group right so it brings this new folder down here and I'm gonna rename that I'm gonna call it assets okay so every asset that I have here, I'm going to put it in there. So I'm going to put that there. 
everything. And basically all these doors. Okay. Bingo. So now I'm left with just uh, the basic other shape. So if I hide these assets, um, these other doors are not in there. They don't think of themselves as being part of the, the club. I'm gonna fix that real quick. Uh, by simply copying this and make it lose its, um, its information. So I'm gonna copy that like that. And I'm just gonna simply select these guys again and uh, copy them back. Oh, move them back into position. So I'm gonna uncheck the copy and simply move them back. Alright, and then here I'm gonna delete the initial guys. So this guy, so this guys as well. Right click, delete. Okay, so now we've got this guy. So I'm gonna put them back in the folder assets, drag it, and drop it there. So now we're good. So now we have our assets looking good. Maybe I want these doors to be also a bit transparent and also to have a line width of one. Okay, there you go. So, in the next part of this, I'm going to start showing you how you can start to play around. I hope that this was uh, pretty helpful. Um, it, it was a pretty lengthy tutorial, I wasn't expecting it to be so long, but uh, in the next part I'm going to show you how to start playing around and to place them, but you can already go ahead and uh, start doing that yourself. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'm um, looking to hear back from your comments and what you think about this whole free CAD ordeal. Okay.